Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at Yo Kerish versus a God Squad. Now, this is kind of similar to every experience that you're having now with the game, right? Everybody has a God Squad. Anyone that's been playing the game for a while. But it's nice to see that, you know, cards like this can still dominate. Especially against guys that are probably used to just winning by pure strength in their squad. Like, we come up against an unbelievable squad here playing with our free to play against a guy that has double boosters pretty much coming out his wazoo. But it's all about just controlling the play. And we're playing, obviously, a little bit of possession here with our free to play account. We haven't spent a, a, a penny or a cent on this team. We've got nominating contracts, we've got the free Iniesta, we've got player of the week Tillman. And of course, we have Rafael Leao up front as well with Yo Kerish. Now, I, I always find in these games, lads, that if you kind of like wait and see how the opponent is playing, you can open up gaps. And look at that for a finish from Yo Kerish, who is definitely fast becoming one of my favorite strikers to use. Just a throwback number nine. The game doesn't really reward these number nines. But you can see here, this opponent that I was playing, he wasn't a noob. I mean, it's not like this guy just had an unbelievable squad. And he just couldn't play the game. I mean, you'll see some of the chances here. Like, this is kind of pretty decent chance creation. I mean, he's doing the right thing. He just gets unlucky twice there. That could have been one all. And eventually, I mean, with some nice dribbling here, out to Jude Bellingham, back into Van Basten. Again, that's a wayward pass. Messi has a little bit of a, I don't know what he was doing, maybe a dose of diarrhea or something. He just literally stops up dead. And then it's a, just a simple tap in from there. But you'll see some of the chance creation that this guy was making was pretty decent. But defensively, very, very, very loose with the ball at the back. And especially if you play possession, you let the AI make runs for you against somebody that's very aggressive and very loose with the ball, you can get a lot of chances. But look at Jokera Shirlez just holding off to one of the best players in the game and just really strong, really sharp. And again, another big mistake here. I probably should have done better here with Rafael Leao, but we, we don't. We nearly get caught in the break. But again, it's given away back in from your Tillman to Jokera Back in again and then another tidy little finesse finish. Now, a lot of the time when you've got run and gun strikers, I'm talking Saviola, Romario, any of those boys that are short and sweet, I, I do feel like that the finishing isn't quite there um, with a lot of these guys. A lot of the bigger boys, you know, you're talking Van Basten, Jokeres, uh, Shevchenko, uh, Torres even, any of those guys, they seem to have it in their player ID that they're just more natural goal scorers. Now, I've had this debate with a lot of people as to, you know, a lot of people on my live streams ask me, why don't I use or rate Lewandowski? Why don't I use or rate Harry Kane? Why don't I really play more with Van Basten, Eric Cantona? And to be honest with you, lads, the main reason is because I use Collar. That's the main kind of reason. It's a lovely move here. He just obviously uh, shit the bed a little bit there. Uh, he should have just carried that on because he would have had the strength with Hullet to carry that into possession and into tackles. But I do feel like a lot of the time, right, when you're looking at games like this, a lot of the time when you're playing with a classic number nine, the opponent doesn't really take it as much of a threat as if you're playing with the likes of Romario. I mean, the possession that he's given us away here with the squad he has, and literally just running out, trying to win the ball back, with no real plan as to, like, if he doesn't win the ball back. That kind of is a lot of the, a lot of the issue with the game at the moment, is that, like, there is no doubt in my mind, this guy, I think, was Division 4, I think. We are obviously playing on our free-to-play, but... There's no doubt in my mind that this guy, you know, is probably just used to completely dominating just because of his team strength and the way that the game is kind of like working at the moment. But I want to just show you a couple of other clips here as we end this video. A double with your Kerash here and then one goal at the end as well. It's actually a hat-trick really. Um, but unbelievable movement from him and we're going to just rinse and repeat that move. In off, the in off the right shoulder, in across the body to the left and you can just go and score two goals. That's what I'm talking about with the likes of Van Basten, Cantona, Berbatov, those type of classic number nines uh, that can just score very, very, at a very high clip. So let me know what you think of Yo Keresh, lads. He is available for super cheap in the standard GP marketplace. And honestly, boys, I do feel as if he is, he is definitely playing massively above his stats. This is kind of a card that I used to love kind of looking at back in early eFootball 23 and even early eFootball 24, days about hidden gems i used to do a hidden gem series i feel like you can't really do that now anymore because the players are just so good now and um you know it's so easy to get good players but let me know what you think of him have you used him have you been using him for a while i definitely think he's going to get a showtime card soon but until next time peace